Hi guys, this is Angela from the London App Brewery. Welcome to episode two in our series of how to make apps with no programming experience. So if you're watching this video, then I presume you would already seen episode one, where we run through all the tools and materials that's required to build iOS apps. So now that you have Xcode 7 installed, let's go on a tour of the magical land of Xcode and I'll show you what all the different panes and buttons do. So once you download Xcode and you run it, uh, the first time that you open the application, it may ask you to agree to a number of things. Um, once you click agree to all those things, then it should present you with this welcome screen. So the most important thing here is just to check that we're all working on the same version of Xcode. So if you have a look over here, just make sure that says version 7 point something. So as long as it's above 7, then you're good to go. So firstly, we're going to click on create a new Xcode project. Now Xcode will ask us to choose a template for our new project. And since that we want to build an iOS application, we're going to go under iOS and application tab and choose the single view application. Now this is one of the simplest templates to work with and we're going to use it to make a quick hello world app. Now over here, you can also choose the templates to make a watch app or an app for tvOS or OS X. But today we're going to make an app for iPhones. So we're going to make sure that's selected and then click next. So now it wants us to give our app a name. Let's call it Hello World. And the organization name you can leave blank or you can put down your own name. But in the organization identifier, we have to put down something that's called a reverse domain name. So our website address is called londonatbrewery.com. So here we write com.londonatbrewery. Don't worry if you don't have a website. You can write down something unique like com.yourname, first name, surname. And the only reason why we need this is because it generates a bundle identifier with your organization identifier and also your app name tagged at the end. And this provides a unique key that identifies your app among the millions of others. Now here under language, make sure that Swift is selected. Objective-C, as you'll know, is the old language that was used to make iOS apps and it is still supported to some extent. But in my opinion, Swift is so, so much more beginner friendly. And that's the language that we're going to be working with um, in these tutorials. So make sure as iPhone is selected and now click next. So Xcode will ask you where you would like to save your project and go ahead and choose a folder. I'm just going to leave it in my desktop. Right, so Xcode has generated a new template file for our Hello World project. And I'm going to run through what each of these panes do and what their names are. So don't worry if you don't remember what they're called. Um, in the description box below, I've included a link to a PDF file that I've made um, that tells you what each of the names are for the different panes so that if you do get lost um, in the coming videos when I refer to the navigation pane or when I refer to the outline pane just have a look at that PDF and you'll know what I'm talking about. So when you look over here on the left you will see a pretty bog standard file navigation system and for the most part, you will be using it as the file navigator and you can see all the files that make up your app. So for example, if you look at viewcontroller.swift, this is where some of your code is located and the middle part here is called the code editor. So it's called the code editor when you're looking at a code file, so viewcontroller.swift or appdelegate.swift. But when you're looking at a design file, um, such as main storyboard and you can tell the difference between design file and a code file. The code files have a little red bird and the design files are yellow. So here in your main storyboard is where most of your designs will go. 
Um, and once you open up Main Storyboard, you get a new pane pop up. And this is called the document outline. On here, you see an outline of all the things that are in your design file. So if we go to the bottom right corner, this section is called the object library. So when this square in a circle icon is selected, it's showing the object library and we can search for a button. So go ahead and just type button into that search bar. And when you found it, click and drag it into the top left corner of your app. So as you can see, when you drag around um, interface elements such as buttons or labels in the design file, the blue guidelines will pop up to tell you when you're near the margins or when you're at the center. And you can use this to guide your designs. So we're just going to put it here on the left, top left part of our screen with two margins. And we're going to leave that button over there. So instantly you can see in the document outline, the button appears and it's nested within the view, which is this large square. You can use this design file navigation to navigate through all of your interface elements. Once you've got a load of buttons and a load of labels, then it can get quite difficult uh, trying to select the right one in the design. But you can name them in here. Uh, so let's call this our hello world button. And if you want to rename it, just click it wait two seconds and then click it again to edit it. If you look at the right side of Xcode, this pane is called the outline pane. And when this little shield symbol is selected, it shows the attribute inspector within the outline pane. Inside this attribute inspector, you can change um, the properties for your button. Uh, so let's change its name to Hello World. And you can see here that it's in there, but it's truncated because the button is not big enough to, to contain all the text. So let's go ahead and drag it so that uh, we can increase its size and we can see all of the words. And then we can change the text color here under red or we can change the font size and make it a bit bigger. So you can go ahead and mess around with all these attributes until you're happy. And we are now ready to launch our first Hello World app. So if you go up to the top here where you've got this A and you've got your file Hello World, if you go over to the right and pick a iPhone from the simulator. So the iOS simulator comes prepackaged with the Xcode software and you can pick from any of these screen sizes. So we're going to choose iPhone 5 and then we're going to go ahead and click on this play button or you can use the shortcut which is command and R. So hold down command and press R to run your app. The first time that uh, Xcode launches the uh, simulator, it may take it a little while for it to load. Be patient, it will happen eventually. So here we can see our first app working, displaying the words that we wanted it to. That's how easy it is to build a Hello World app in Xcode. I know that Xcode has a lot of buttons, a lot of features, but don't worry for now because we are going to go into detail and explain all of them as we use them in the coming tutorials. And that's it. You've successfully made and launched your first Hello World app. And now we can look forward to the next episode where we're going to be teaching you some basic Swift uh, programming concepts in Xcode Playgrounds. And we're going to get our hands dirty and do some coding. So that's all from us at the London App Brewery. We'll look forward to seeing you next time.